and uh, you know some brood here but they've got a good amount of brood and they've got larvae and stuff they've got a lot of food supplies so i'm just going to put them back together now and not mess with them anymore hey guys all right um so i'm having another issue with the bees i just don't know man what's going on so I've been feeding them every other day. That's helped with them being so sort of agitated a lot, you know. Um, it's also helped them sort of get their act back together. I finally found the queen, which was the original swamp rat queen um, in the one box. So we've got both queens. They have brood, they've got nectar, they've got pollen, they've got capped honey. Everything was looking awesome. And then yesterday I went to feed them and I got into the Italian's box and I started finding um, wax moth worms or larvae. They look like worms, they look like inchworms. Uh, but they're gray bodies, black heads. That's a big issue. Left unchecked, those things will destroy the hive in a short period of time. So today, I'm going in there, into the box and I'm going to break all the frames down and look and see which ones have, um, appear to have the eggs or the larvae of the, of the wax moss. And I'll pull those out. I'll concentrate the frames down so that the bees don't have so many, so much space so they can protect it better. In the meantime, or in the process of that, I'm going to take those lying straw frames out, even though they're filled with honey and brood. I'm just going to, I got to bite the bullet, pull those out, because I think I've created the problem beyond the fact that it's a 20 frame box and they only have, I think they have seven or nine frames, which is big enough. But worse, um, since I put that extension on the top, of those two by fours in order to have the Langstroth frames, which you remember stand up on end in there, it means that doesn't fit as well with the top. So I think it is given areas for the wax moss to be able to enter the hive as well as other pests because there's, uh, uh, what's it call it, um, ants in there as well, that it's allowing pests to get into the hive, not just from the one entrance. It's, only, it's got three entrances, but all of them are blocked except for one. So I thought that was it. But I think they're able to come in, you know, up over that, the top of the, um, the top or in between the top and that extension. I think they're able to come in gaps between the extension and the actual box. I mean, I think I've created this situation, obviously out of ignorance. But we're going to get in here together and check this out and, and see. Because if I got it, you're going to have it too. All right, let's go. All right, guys, this is what the box looks like when I opened it. You can see things are sort of a train wreck. And the reason is, is because of this extension, okay? And I didn't realize, of course, because I don't know, you know, all these gaps and everything are all areas. They're basically other hive entrances for other, all sorts of pests and stuff. So I thought I was doing them a favor by not pulling those Langstroth frames out because they were using them. And I just didn't realize that I was actually exacerbating the situation. The reason none of this is uniform here and has gaps is because all of it's makeshift in order to accommodate this extension. And then this, of course, I had it already so messed up, I didn't really care that I used these hive beetle traps that basically just sit and they leave an open too right? It's not a top bar hive in this sense. It's some combination between a top bar hive and a, and like a Langstroth hive where they can get up on top of it. So it's a mess. I don't know what the heck that is right there. You see that? That looks, that's foreign. That doesn't belong there and it's not propolis. Is that maybe, is, is that part of the, uh, the worms? The worms were in here. They were on this side. They weren't over in the hive, but they're in the hive. I mean, obviously they're in the hive. So anyway, it's a train wreck, guys. But I'm gonna bring you along and let's check this out together. The bees, for some reason, are sort of agitated today. Um, they haven't been aggressive. I mean, they've been coming up to me, but they haven't been stinging me. 
They haven't been aggressive, but they've been agitated. So let's just see. Just fill the air here with smoke. It seems to work best. They should be used to this process by now. I've been doing this every other day. Hive beetle. I can't tell you how nice this hive was. I mean, I've been seeing very few hive beetles, some, but like they're, it seemed like they were managing them. It really did. They had a much more significant issue uh, in midsummer. Wow. So I just fed them yesterday, and they're out of food. They had not been doing that. They've been doing basically half a container every day. But that, it, this, they're completely empty right now. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames. So I'm gonna take them down, well, I'm gonna take them down as far as they have to in order to make sure that I address all the moth frames. But I'm thinking they need to be certainly no more than seven frames, maybe even less. I mean, these are the sorts of things, you know, that I'm new, right? So these are the sorts of things that we have to learn. Just making dumb mistakes, thinking that we're being nice to them by giving them more frames. I thought, well, that, of course I give them more frames. That would make them feel like they didn't want to swarm. That was my fixation. Oh, I don't want to make them feel like they need to swarm because they, their space is too limited. Okay, there, that is capped honey and has, there is no, I'm gonna take it out. There is no brood on there and there is no, uh, you know, silky, that nastiness that the, that the uh, um, wax moths leave. I guess I should show you the frames instead of just tell you since I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You see, capped honey, comb, but no. Can you imagine what craziness I'm gonna have when I have to move all those bees off of the, the two, the four Langstroff conversion frames? They're gonna lose their friggin' minds. And I have to find the queen first because she was on those frames the last time I was in here. Okay, I see none of that. The only thing I see on there is you see those two dark cells on there? Over about midway over here. There's two dark cells. But look, they've got a lot of capped honey. I don't see any more of the larva or the worms. At least right now, right? I mean. I see some drones. I didn't, re I thought the drones would be gone by this point. I do not see any of that sliminess I don't see any of it yet the only thing I see that I don't like is this that I don't know what it is but it's this brown here where it's indented but also that looks like it's maybe dead brood or something there's lots of pollen there. There's good amount of brood. There's larva, including larva that's now emerging. I'll watch and see if any of them become worms because they said that you can confuse the bee larva for the 
wax moth larva when they first emerge if you don't know what you're talking about. And let's be honest. I don't know what I'm talking about. That frame's coming out, but it's not coming out until I know that I've got the queen isolated. That I can drop her in the box. That's my, obviously my most, well, not necessarily the most important thing because <laughs> I got big problems. I don't see any of the worms, which I guess is good. The reason I say I guess it's good when it seems like it would be self-obvious that it is good is the fact that they said when the worms emerge, they go and they burrow into the wood. So because I'm looking on the frames, it means I don't see their little excrement trails, which is good, but it doesn't mean that they're not in there because they would be moving off into the, oh, wow, high beetles, big time, big time. Okay, and here, this is a little bit of brood, some pollen, capped honey. On this side, same thing, capped honey and nectar. Capped honey and nectar. Some brood and capped honey. These frames, these last two frames, are coming out of here. These are the Langstroth frames. Those are gonna come out so that I can go back to the traditional Layens box and stop all of this extra space that they have. Okay, this frame is, I think, the frame that she was on last time. I think it's a brood frame. I wanna say it was the next one down from the, uh, the two conversion frames. Could be wrong, it could be the next one, but I think it's this one. Okay. Another, well, it looks like larva, a little brood. Uh, is that the queen? No, I don't think so. Big worker, but not the queen. I see no sliminess. Oh, there's the queen. Okay, I don't know if you can see her, but she's right there in the middle. Okay, so she's gonna go back in the box. Yeah, I wanna keep her obviously in the box. So good. That's the same frame she was on the last time. Yeah, she's gonna stay and this frame doesn't have, that's really good news. This frame doesn't have any sliminess on it and she's on that frame. So, I feel really good about that. Okay, I've decided that I'm going to try to clear these frames. Okay, so now this other one, I just want to make sure that the queen didn't jump back over on here. There are bees like craziness like everywhere.
Okay. So this is the frame that had the queen on it. Yep. Yep, she's still on there. Okay. We've got a queen alive. Then we've got something to work with. So let's just continue on. Did I already look at this one? I don't remember. I don't think so. This is a brood from, no, I didn't look at this one. Okay. It has a good amount of brood, has a good amount of larvae, has a good amount of, of, uh, pollen and capped honey. This side too, I'll just show you. I see no wax moth activity. I don't see anything. Well, this is such a beautiful frame. Such a good, healthy frame. That's a beautiful one to have with her. And it doesn't have any wax moth issues. You know, they're being awfully understanding if you want to know the truth. I mean, look at this. I'm tearing them all up. I'm wreaking havoc. And they are, for the most part, Oh, another nice frame with brood, larva, mm -hmm. capped honey, nectar. Beautiful frame. This side, all nectar and honey. No brood. Look at it. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Look at it. Can you see it? No. Ron, go ahead and slow the image down and you can look. But I do not see any of the sliminess. Okay, guys, girls, come on. Like we're, we're, we're having some success here. Let's, let us, this frame looks like it was an old brood frame because it has the darker coloration, but I don't see any brood on it. And the end frame has never been a healthy frame. They've never done anything with it. Oh, this frame they haven't done anything with. They've got a little bit of nectar in there. And they've built out the comb, but they don't have anything in the, oh my God, it is covered in friggin' hive beetles. Maybe that's why. I should probably take this one out simply because just to kill the hive beetles. So guys, I haven't seen any. Of the worms and I haven't seen any of the stuff going on. The moth stuff. Oh my God, hive beetles, guys. Hive beetles. They're all in the box in here. How do I get rid of them? I mean, look at this beetle trap. It's just filled with ants. I'm gonna put this on the outside. Ah, I don't see any of the wax moss, but I do see tons of hive beetles. And they seem like they're really rounding up the hive beetles. I think with a smaller hive. Okay, I'm gonna take one of these frames with the honey on it and I'm gonna stick it. I don't know if this is a good idea. Do I put a frame of honey by the hot, 
by the entrance because isn't that gonna make it stink like honey? So now I need to take this conversion off of here. Completely remove it and go to the Layens Hive. Oh my God, guys, we got big problems with high beams. God, guys. <sighs> Stepping on friggin' bees. Okay. So, I'm gonna take this frame of honey stick it down here on the end okay I'm just gonna set that real nice like that then I'm gonna take the brood panels and I'm going to put the brood panels in I want to say that I don't feel like they're, you know, attacking me, you know, per se. I feel like they're swarming around me. I can't imagine what it looks like to you. These are the frames that I took out of the, uh, the hive, and you can see the capped honey. And now look at the bees. This is going to be, they are going to friggin' swarm all over this thing. I mean, they are going to be crazy. It is filled with nectar and honey. And these are just, these aren't bees that I brought here. I knocked them all off. I got every bee off of it. These are, these are foragers that are from whatever hives, wherever they are, including the hive that I took it from. And they are here gonna go crazy. The ones from the hive will probably try to, <laughs> to you know, uh, help the brood there because they don't know any better or they don't know why not to. Anyway, this is gonna be nuts by the time we get back. <laughs> it's getting crazier. Look at this. So the hives are up there on the hill, right? So that's probably 170 yards. But you wouldn't know it. Look at this. They're going to hammer this stuff. Just inclined to leave it for him, even though I'd really like to get some of that honey. <laughs> <laughs>